and I looked up and I saw this light. It wasn't a normal light. It was different. It, it was a luminescent, and it grew. I, I kept looking at it like, what is that? And then it grew large, and I went into it. And I went through this tunnel, and I came into this room that was just beautiful. I felt a presence. I sort of turned around to look at it. And that's when I saw the very tiny pinpoint of light. And the light started to pull me. And there was a physical sensation to the pulling. And I know how that must sound. Nonetheless, it's true. There was a physical sensation, rather like going over a hill real fast. Tell me. And I uh, went toward the light. The only thing I remember is um, I started seeing started seeing the light and um, started walking towards the light. While the ICU team tried to revive Brian, he claims he was walking along a heavenly path lined with flowers. The light came to me as if I was in the middle of the tunnel, yet it went on for eternity. I remember being so at peace and so bathed in this light and this love. She knew she was in the presence of God. I didn't see a face. I didn't see any features other than this beautiful light. And words like amazing and perfect and beautiful, they fall so drastically short. I could not get enough of Him. I could not breathe enough of Him in. I could not get close enough to the light, and the light was all over me. Then, Crystal says she tried to ask God a question. I wanted to know why He didn't love me, or why He lets bad things happen. And yet, as I stood in front of Him, and I faced Him, and I fell to my knees, and I raised my hands, the question I called out to Him was, why didn't I do more for you? Because in an instant, he revealed his true self to me, which is love. I had never truly worshiped God ever in my entire life, but I fell in front of him and I worshiped him. And as I lay there in worship in awe of this creator, I remember saying, I could worship you for eternity. I was an atheist. Now see, it's very easy to be an atheist when you're successful. You have worked your way from Oklahoma welfare to being one of the most powerful men in your part of the country, one of the most powerful men in the state of Oklahoma in relationship to political. It's very easy to be an atheist when you have done all of that. Man can sit back and say, I don't need God. What is God? But it's very difficult to be an atheist when you're laying on your deathbed because you begin to think what if these people are right see there's been one man by the name of Ron Short that has stood between me and the gates of hell one man that had witnessed to me about the love of Jesus for five years before I became ill one man and you know I would debate him and I liked him because he 
did what he said he was going to do. I mean, he was the only one that I saw that professed to be Christian that lived what he said he was going to do. Uh, and so I, I really respected him. I didn't believe what he said, but I respected him. But when I'm laying on my deathbed and knowing that I'm going to die, guess who I thought about? I thought about, what if Ron is right? What if there is a heaven and a hell? And so the most immediately immediately the most pressing thought in my mind is how do I get saved what is saved what is saved how do I get saved and so I sent them for Ron short I wanted him to come down uh, because I wanted him to do ever what he had to do I had no idea how can a man hanging on a tree in Israel 2,000 years ago what is that to me but I knew that he had something that I had to have. And that night, see, I had him go for Ron, but Ron wasn't home. Ron was in Alabama. And so I had him go and send for Ron. And that night was the longest night that I've ever had in my entire life, before or since. And that night is as I would be laying there in bed. As I'm laying there in bed, I would begin to fade away. I would begin to fade away, and as I would fade away, I would begin to go down. It, now, it was like darkness. It was like, it was so, so dark. It was like the very darkness just penetrated into your very, very being. And as I left, and I can tell you I left my body, because I remember when I came back into my body, you know, I don't know where I was out of my body. Now there are people that talk about the, the, a light. There are people that talk about floating above. There are people that talk about a feeling of warmth and love. I didn't feel any of that. I felt none of that. I felt untold terror. Untold terror. Because I knew that if I ever went all the way, if I slipped all the way, I would never get back. Now, in my beings of beings, I knew that. And so I fought all night long. They told me later on, I not only pulled the mattress cover off of the mattress, I pulled the mattress up on me because I had to stay. I had to wait. I had to wait till Ron got there. Whatever he had to do, I had to wait. But I would, again, and then I would leave and I would, I would be going down like a deep, deep, dark terror. Now, my, my skin began to get cold. Now, it's not like cold when you walk out into the air. It's like bone, bone chilling cold in my lower extremities. And you can feel the coldness begin to come up the legs. And again, I would begin to leave. Now, and I would be in that darkness, and I'd be in that void. Uh, and I remember one time entering back in my body, because when I entered my body, it was like, just like that. I felt my body thud, my physical body thud, when I entered back in. Now, I, believe me, believe me, that is the most horrifying, terrifying experience that I've ever encountered. And I fought all night long. And the next morning, somewhere 9, 30, 10 o'clock, in came Ron. And Ron came in and he says, Dr. Whitaker, what do they say is your chances? I said, Ron, they tell me I have none. He says, now's the time. And I said, you're right. I mean, I would cursed him, I would spit at him, but now was the time because I had to have whatever he had because I had a short period of time on earth and I didn't know I have any idea when I might make that trip and go all the way.